In November 2023, this mysterious airplane took flight for the first time. And it didn't look like a normal plane because, well, it isn't. Its distinctive wing shape, sleek profile, and almost everything else is designed for one purpose. To fly silently into any country on Earth, remain undetectable by any radar or sensors, and drop a bomb. It's called the B-21 Raider and the United States government is willing to pay around $700 million for one of them, the same price as building a skyscraper. It's one of the most expensive planes the U.S. has ever made, so it's no surprise that its expectations are high. This isn't just another airplane. It's the embodiment of America's determination, and it's a testament to our strategy of deterrence with the capabilities to back it up every time and everywhere. That's what America does. So what is it about this plane that makes it so expensive? And does the U.S. really need it? The B-21 Raider is the first strategic bomber in more than three decades. The most capable stealth bomber ever built. As long as we fight on the surface of the Earth, Hitler has all the advantage, but with a strategy of air power, the advantage is ours. For almost a century, one of the U.S. military's strengths has been its air power. It's built some excellent fighter jets, sure, but it's always had some of the best bombers in the world. The U.S. used thousands of bombers to pummel Nazi Germany before invading, then used them again against communist forces in Korea and Vietnam. Since the end of World War II, this has been an incredibly important strategic capability. Todd Harrison is an expert in defense strategy. A single aircraft could hit 50 or 80 targets. That is an incredible firepower advantage. During the Cold War, the U.S. and the Soviet Union both kept large bomber fleets ready in case war broke out between them. But the U.S. kept improving its bombers because the Soviet Union kept building better air defenses. Air defenses are radars and sensors that detect and track planes, and guided missiles and fast fighter jets that can shoot them down. This cat and mouse game is how the U.S. ended up with the three types of bombers that it uses today. B-52H Stratofortress, which the U.S. has been using since the 1950s, the B-1 Lancer from the 1980s, and the B-2 Spirit from the 1990s. Each can travel very long distances to bomb a target, but are limited by what kind of air defenses they encounter. If there aren't any, then the U.S. can use the Stratofortresses, which are huge but easily detectable. If there are older or not very sophisticated air defenses, the U.S. can use the B-1 Lancers, which can evade some radars by flying at low altitudes and up to 900 miles per hour. But if there are modern, advanced air defenses, the U.S. uses the B-2 Spirit, the world's only stealth bomber. Stealth basically means radars have a very hard time detecting it. The Spirit's shape and coating absorbs and deflects radar waves, so it appears smaller on radar than it actually is. It has a 172-foot-long wingspan, but on most radars, appears to be the size of a tennis ball. Spirits also have electronics that jam and obscure sensors, and even technology that hides the heat its engine emits from infrared sensors. So if sensors can't really detect the spirit, then enemies can't really shoot it down. So it can theoretically get into any country and drop a bomb on anything. Just having that ability is a major way in which the U.S. protects itself. Well, ultimately, it's about deterrence. So when we get into a crisis situation with another country, we want them to be able to look at our fleet of aircraft and say, there's nothing we could do to stop those aircraft from hitting targets in our country. So we better back down. This thinking also applies to the U.S.'s deadliest weapon. All right, so the point here is that the U.S. believes that in order to defend itself, it needs the ability to drop a bomb on anywhere on Earth. And so what I did here was design an animation that's going to visualize this cat and mouse game. Countries are going to build better and better defenses, and the U.S. is going to have to build better and better, and I mean stealthier planes, in order to penetrate those defenses. If a country ever builds defenses that the U.S. can't penetrate, the U.S. considers that a national security threat. And so before moving on any further, I figured this might be a good chance to talk about a another kind of security, that's your personal security. As you know, there are bad people out there on the internet trying to take your personal data, and they can do it without you ever knowing unless you've got the best defenses. Luckily, our sponsor for this week's video is just that, it's Incogni. 
So data breaches are becoming more and more common. A 2022 report found that they're up 41.5% since 2021. I got a notification just last night, and this is totally real, that 41% of my passwords were exposed in a recent data breach. That's really bad, but it's really, really hard and annoying to get that data back. See, there are hundreds of data brokers out there who take your data and they sell it to businesses without you ever even knowing it. And that's how it could end up in the hands of criminals. They can have your logins, your home address, your full name, even your social security number. Now we can request to get that data back, but it's really onerous and it would take us years to do. And so that's where Incogni steps in. They'll do it for you and it only takes three easy steps. Let me show you how it works. All right, so the first thing you do is you go to incogni.com and you create an account and you tell Incogni whose personal data you want them to remove. Then you grant them the right to work on your behalf. They'll contact all those data brokers and request them to remove your data. Step three, you just sit back and you watch them do it if data brokers object, Incogni will handle it and get you informed every step of the way. So here's the deal. Use the code search party at the link below and they'll give you 60% off Incogni's annual membership. That's incogni.com slash search party. Now, Incogni was actually the sponsor of our very first search party video. And so I've been using them for a couple months and I can tell you it's made a huge difference. So if you want to keep your personal data safe online and you want to support search party as well, the best thing you can do is go to that link and try Incogni. Thanks again, Incogni, for your support. Now we'll get you back to the episode. Nuclear weapons serve only one purpose. It's an important purpose, but it's a single purpose. And that's to prevent the use of nuclear weapons against us or our friends. The U.S. maintains three ways it can launch a nuclear weapon. These bombers, land-based missiles, and submarine-based missiles. So if an enemy destroys two, the U.S. will always have a third to strike back with. But having nuclear-capable bombers is particularly important to the U.S. So the bomber leg of the triad, one of its main advantages is signaling. You can get your bombers airborne and that sends a signal to an adversary that you're serious. If things change and you decide, hey, call off the attack, the bombers can turn around and come back. Missiles, once you fire them, there's no bringing them back. So theoretically, U.S. deterrence depends on having bombers that can evade the best air defenses and enough of them to survive a major attack. The problem is, the U.S. only has 19 spirits left. We really took a peace dividend in the 1990s uh, because we didn't have another major strategic rival. We only bought 21 of them in total. One of them crashed, and one of them uh, is set aside just for testing purposes. You really only have 19 possible aircraft. In fact, the U.S. has reduced its bomber fleet by two-thirds since 1990 and the planes that it still has are in pretty rough shape. The 19 Spirits and 62 Lancers are getting old and have become expensive to maintain. So the U.S. believes it needs a bomber to replace them that is more advanced and easier to operate. Their solution is the B-21 Raider. Despite limited information about it, the Raider is clearly inspired by the Spirits' design, with some improvements. Its tail shape will likely help it fly more efficiently at high altitudes than the Spirit's sawtooth-shaped tail, and its engine intake valves are lower, giving it a sleeker profile which will help it deflect radar better. The U.S. claims that on advanced radars, the Raider appears smaller than an insect. Plus, the defense company building the Raider claims that it will one day be able to be flown remotely, like a drone. Will any other country in the world have a plane comparable to the B-21? not even close because this gives us a set of capabilities that really you can't find anywhere else. The U.S. is keeping the strata fortress to use against undefended targets, but by replacing the Lancers and the Spirits with Raiders, the U.S. is hoping to maintain the ability to bomb anything in the world, even as one country builds even better defenses. China may be one step closer to attacking Taiwan. China's air force is now the largest in Asia and the world's third largest. Since the 1990s, China has poured hundreds of billions of dollars into improving its military. It's threatening to one day use it to invade Taiwan. But since the U.S. has promised to defend Taiwan, China's built some of the world's best air defenses. So it's very difficult if you actually want to fly in or near China. If a war broke out, China could use thousands of ballistic missiles to destroy U.S. bases in the region forcing the U.S. to rely heavily on its bombers, which can take off from the mainland. But China could then use its very advanced radar to detect and then help destroy any non-stealthy bombers, leaving the U.S. with only its spirits to take them out. 
since many of these defenses are mounted on vehicles, the spirits would need to fly around for hours searching for them. A task that might be hard to accomplish with only 19 planes. B-21 Raider is nicknamed the China Bomber because the U.S. designed it with this exact scenario in mind. Its longer range and advanced stealth is reportedly suited to evade and destroy China's best defenses, and in order to have enough of them, the U.S. plans to purchase 100 of them to start, meaning at $700 million each, this plane will cost the U.S. at least $203 billion over the next 30 years. That part of the Air Force is actually becoming more important, more critical than the fighters or the other types. If you've got to prioritize, I think you put the bomber right up there. By building a plane that China can't detect, the U.S. is hoping to deter it from even starting a war. America's defense will always be rooted in deterring conflict. So we are again making it plain to any potential foe. The risk and the cost of aggression far outweigh any conceivable gains. But today, the Raider is still only in the testing phase. So how sure are we that it's going to work? So there are absolutely risks that the B-21 will fall short. The first is that the, the program just goes terribly awry. Rob Farley is an expert in military doctrine. It's just really, really hard to design and build a large number of incredibly sophisticated pieces of military equipment. Most of these projects, you actually have to invent a ton of stuff. And then you hope that that process goes smoothly, and sometimes it doesn't go smoothly. Like what happened to the Spirit. Once built, the special coating invented to absorb radar turned out not to work in heavy rain. Fixing it required hours of extra maintenance, causing the cost of each spirit to rise out of control, a phenomenon ominously called the death spiral. And the death spiral is when Congress looks at this number, says, oh my goodness, these planes are $2 billion a piece. How can we possibly afford them? And says, well, let's try not to buy 100 of them. Let's try to buy 50 of them. When you only buy 50 of them, you are including all of the infrastructure cost. Your cost per plane then skyrockets, right? Because you're getting fewer planes, but you're spending almost as much money. That's how back in the 90s, the U.S. went from ordering 132 spirits to receiving just 21 for $2 billion each. More recently, a new stealth fighter jet, the F-35, flirted with the death spiral after many technical problems led to years of delays and billions in cost overruns. So far, reports claim that the B-21 program is on schedule and roughly on budget. But even if the U.S. does everything right, the B-21 could still fall short if its enemies develop even better radar that can detect it. Now, in the past, there have been scenarios where we have bought brand new weapons, the B-58 Hustler, just in the strategic bomber family, which were almost completely rendered obsolete within three, four, five years of their development, right, by new technology. In that case, the Raiders' internal electronics that help it evade sensors are reportedly being designed to allow constant upgrades. So it will be able to keep up and remain stealthy for decades. Despite these risks, the U.S. is moving forward and spending billions on what it believes is the plane it needs for the future. Honestly, I think we don't have a choice. If you want to be a world power and you want to be able to deter countries like Russia and China, I think we have to have this capability. I would negotiate a hard bargain with the contractor, but at the end of the day, I think we need it. All right, thanks for watching episode 12. You might've noticed that was our second kind of geopolitical story in a row. And it's because we've got four sports stories coming up for you next. Uh, the first one is about the Euros soccer tournament uh, coming up this month. This was actually one of the stories that I pitched uh, Johnny and Iz when we were coming up with Search Party. So I'm really excited about that one. Um, but we'll also have stories about Brazil. If you're a fan from Brazil, keep an eye on our community tab because I might need your help for a story uh, coming up later in June. And then we're going to cover the Olympics as well. As usual, there's information about our membership program that's in the description below. And please keep sending me stories. It's been really helpful. Uh, I really love doing stories that you guys recommend. Um, thank you all for your help. And we'll see you in a couple of weeks.